Hi, my name is Terry from Tree Marie Soapworks. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this swirl. It's a cosmic wave swirl and I learned it from Tatiana Serko a while back when I was doing the soap challenge. And if you want to check out her page, I have linked her Instagram page in the description below. Let's get started. First I measure my distilled water and then I measure my sodium hydroxide and then I add my sodium hydroxide to my distilled water. And make sure that you stir right away and get that dissolved and don't let it settle on the bottom because it can form a crust and be very hard to break up. Next I measure my sodium lactate and I measure that at a rate of 1 teaspoon per pound of oils. I set those aside in a place that's well ventilated and that is safe from any pets or children. While those are cooling, I start to measure my other ingredients starting with my coconut oil. And I melt that and then I start to measure my liquid oils starting with my avocado oil, then my castor oil, and then my olive oil. I include my recipes below but I don't give them in amounts, I give them in percentages for the oils. I give enough information for you to put it into soap calc. I want you to be able to do that yourself, that's why I don't give you the exact amounts. I want you to learn how to put recipes into a soap calculator. So if you're having trouble just ask questions because any recipe you find on the internet you should really be putting through a soap calculator just to make sure that that lie amount is correct. Okay, now let's get started with our colors. First we have coconut carbon. This is smooth coconut carbon from Elements Bath & Body. It's also called activated charcoal. I use it at a rate of 1.5 teaspoons per pound of soap and for this one I'm using this for 50% of my batter. In the future I plan on making a video that explains color a little more and how to figure it. But right now I have a video that I made for Elements Bath & Body that shows how to use their colorant calculator. And this is a really valuable tool. I use this all the time when I'm figuring my colorants and it makes it very easy. No math is involved. You just have to put in some numbers and your percentages or your amount of batter that you want to color and it will do the work for you. And I left a link in the description to find that video. Okay, now let's talk about the dark purple that I'm finishing up here. I use this for 40% of my batter and I use the activated charcoal at a rate of 0.125 teaspoons per pound of soap. And the cosmic aurora purple I used at a rate of 1 teaspoon per pound of oils. For the remaining 10% of the batter, I'm using Cosmic Aurora Purple and Ravishing Red, and those are both from Elements Bath & Body, and I'm using them at a rate of 0.75 teaspoons per pound of oils. I normally use extra oils from squeeze bottles to disperse my colorants, but today I'm using batch oils, and you'll see why next. I am using two additional colors that will not go into batter, they'll just be dispersed into oils and that's why I'm using oils from the batch and not extra oils because it would get to be too many oils and too much of a super fat. So I'm using these two colors and they are both from Mad Micas and one is called Snow White and the other is called Flash Dance. And I'm dispersing them at a rate of one to one. So I'm using one and a half teaspoons of the colorant to one and a half teaspoons of the batch oils. And the idea is that the oils will absorb into the batch and that'll leave more intense colors from these two colorants. Next I add my cocoa butter pastilles to my melted coconut oil. And then I add my liquid oils that I measured before. And then I add my fragrance oil. And this is Night Violet Fragrance Oil from Brambleberry. It's part of their Celestial Collection and it behaved very well for this recipe. On their label it says it has slight acceleration and it did not accelerate at all for me. After the oils in the lye water have cooled to a temperature between 85 and 95 degrees Fahrenheit, I add my sodium lactate to my lye water and then I strain my lye water into my oils. Before I began this soap, I noted the weight of my bowl so that I can subtract the weight of the bowl off. So I weigh the weight of my bowl and contents, then I subtract the weight of the bowl off, and then I multiply that number by 0 0.5, 0 0.4, and 0 0.1 to get my 50%, 40%, and 10% of the batter. And right here I give the batter a good stirring with my spatula just to see what it's going to do. If I think it's going to accelerate, I would not 
use the stick blender. I would just use the spatula to stir, but it seems like it's doing just fine. And now I'm separating the batter by the 10%, 40%, and 50%. Next I just add my three colors and I stir them in well. And you can see on the middle one, the dark purple, I didn't get that one mixed in as good when I was using my palette knife. And so I make sure and try to get any clumps that I see out and do that before I pour the batter. I use this cordless mini mixer to mix my batter. I do that when I have small amounts of batter and you see that 10% of batter, it can't really be stick blended because it would introduce so many air bubbles in there. So I just use the mini mixer to treat each batter the same. And then after that, I just wait and then I'll stir and wait and stir and see when that batter is thick enough to pour. I waited till the batter was at about medium trace and it's fairly thick but it's still definitely very pourable and I just poured the purple and the pink on top of the black and then I added a little bit of my accent colors with a pipette and then I just poured it in the corner and let it spread out and let me tell you this technique is so fun I can't wait to do it again it's just it's so neat how it comes out and you see on my finished bars that they're a little blurry and you can see why because that's the bottom of these. That's what's kind of moving across the bottom. So they're kind of be a little smeared on the top when these are turned over. But I kind of like it actually because the picture I was going for had a look like that. You don't see really defined edges. So I linked the picture that I found on Pinterest that I was going for and I think it came out pretty close. Originally, I was planning on adding glitter to these when I pop them out of the mold and do the same spray method, but don't try that because I use glitter in my spray bottle and that does not go through your tip. I thought it probably wouldn't, but I tried it anyway. But then I used a paintbrush and I just painted it on and it came out all right. But usually when I use glitter, painting it on would kind of smear the top a little and I didn't want to do that. So I just didn't add glitter. But if you want to add glitter, you could just paint it on with alcohol and glitter and it would, it would look all right. In this case, I just thought it looked good enough as it was and I didn't want to possibly mess it up. I found out that I liked the pores that I did, that I moved my picture less back and forth, and that I just kind of moved it toward me instead of back and forth. I feel like those were less muddy looking. So I think I like it just when you barely move it back and forth if you want a little wiggle in your line, but it often does it on its own and you don't really need to wiggle your picture, but you'll just have to get a feel for that when you're doing it.
I finished this the same way that I normally do. I covered it and then I put it in the oven that was preheated to the lowest temperature and then I turn the oven off right away and I just leave the oven light on and I leave it that way overnight. And this one I planned on leaving in the mold for longer than two days but I just was so curious to get them out of there so I took them out of the mold after 48 hours and they came out fine really but I kind of wished I would have left them in there another day or two but I just couldn't wait to see it. Here I'm just cleaning up any drips that are on the side of the mold and this will come in handy when I'm trying to slide the bars out of the mold. It will make it so they don't get kind of scratched up by the stuff that's on the side. Okay, now that I have my soaps popped out of the mold, I am just planing off the bottom of them because some of them had a tiny bit of soda ash on them and also they were kind of uneven so I would pass them through one time to get one side or the other knocked off and then I'd pass it through again just to get a straight bottom. And then after that I just used my vegetable peeler and I beveled around the bottom edge. Since I'm just cleaning the soap now, I'll tell you a little bit about what I learned. One thing I probably would have done different is I would have added a little more red of that ravishing red that I used for the one that I used at 10%. I would have used probably twice as much. I used 0.75 teaspoons per pound of oils. I would probably change that to one and a half teaspoons per pound of oils. And then because the other color, the Cosmic Aurora is a neon color and that's stronger. So I would keep that at the 0.75. And I think that would have given us more of a red. Like you saw the red when I was pouring it but then in the final batch you don't see that red as much except for that little accent color you see a little bit but I would have liked to have just a little more of that 10% of red. I think that would have set it off quite a bit. I am wondering how confident you are with color and I know you have to start somewhere and when I was new to soap making I just didn't know where to even start with color so if you're not confident with coloring and you have any questions just leave them in the comments and I will eventually get together a color explanation video that will go into depth a little more. I know I talked about it earlier but I just that's one of my loves is color. I'm a graphic artist is what my degree is in so I have an art background and I just love color. Another thing that I learned with this batch is that that trace was just perfect for this and it was about a medium trace I would say and the way I got that trace was just by waiting on it. I think as soap makers a lot of us get impatient so we'll either stick blend it and possibly go a little too far and then halfway through our pouring our batter gets too thick or we'll pour it too soon because we just don't want to wait on it and I think with just being patient and letting your batter sit and stirring it you can let your batter sit and go do some dishes and then come back and stir it again and see if it's good and I I think I waited probably about 20 minutes on this batter but I had plenty of other things to do while I was waiting and I just kept checking on it and so I think that was a good thing I learned from this batch. With this bar that's all the tips I can think of but I just learned that I love this technique and I can't wait to get back and do it again. And I also think that I would like to keep one of these bars for myself and try it because I think in the inside the design would look even prettier. If you're new to my channel and you're interested in soap making, I just started a Facebook group and it's called Tree Marie Soapworks also, but it's a group. So if you just search Tree Marie Soapworks or go in the description below, I'll have a link. It's a group for asking questions and sharing your soap and just a good place for encouragement in your soap making. And I will try to get on there as much as I can, but really it just exploded more than I thought. So there's way more people than I thought would be in it. So I'm trying to do the best I can, but sometimes I'm on there and I'm thinking I just want to be making soap so if you can answer any of the questions go ahead and help someone out and I will get on there as much as I can. If you have a question for me specifically just tag Terry Ensley in the post. 
Also, if you placed an order this week, I appreciate it so much. Thank you. If you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. And also, if you want to receive notifications for when I post my next video, just hit the bell. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.